Hey, this video is going to show off a data acquisition program I wrote for the MAS345 multimeter. Uh, the original software was like 20 years old and wouldn't run on 64-bit machines, so I decided to get some JavaFX practice in and create a useful tool at the same time. We're looking at the port selection drop-down menu here. I made it only include ports that identify themselves as serial ports, so you don't have to go hunt through a big list of USB and parallel ports to find the right one, like most programs make you do. So it auto-selected the last port I used, which was COM port 4. Here we'll tell it to connect and start the polling and start graphing the incoming points. And that's all there is to it. We can see the tables detecting DC voltage. We can switch that over to AC voltage and it'll adjust itself. Here I just touched my fingers to the leads so that we get something to look at other than zero. So I'm switching it to resistance here and we can see that the graph and the table both adjust to the new units. Next is diode cross voltage, and we can also look at transistor HFE gain and temperature using the temperature probe I have plugged in, capacitance, and current, and again we can do DC or AC. I forgot there was something that I wanted to show off, and uh, it's easiest to show on resistance, so I'll switch it back to that. We can see that here I'll short the leads and connect them through myself so we get some mega ohms and some really tiny measurements and we can see that the table shows a normalized value in addition to the value that it's getting directly from the meter and in the normalized value it's converting everything to kilo ohms so that way we have everything on the same scale so that it works on the graph uh, and if you choose to export the data it'll all be at the in the same units. So I'm switching it back to temperature here and just going to touch the probe lead to my French press here just so that we get something nice to look at on the graph. And there we go, we get a pretty exponential decay there. That's nice. I've set the video to play at double speed here just so that we don't have to wait so long for the thermal couple to heat up and cool down. Um, but here we're, we're changing the polling rate uh, default is one second. It's measured in milliseconds though, so we have the defaults 1,000. Uh, here we've changed it to 5,000, so we're only pulling the meter once every five seconds. It's best not to set the pulling period lower than one second. If you do, the meter really bogs down. A lot of the controls on the meter become unresponsive, and the values you get won't be spaced by an even time differential and that's just because the baud rate on the device is only like 600 so it just can't keep up. I used RXTX for the serial port communication because Oracle has stopped supporting their um, serial port communication library and the special font I'm using there in the LCD output came from Style 7. Up next I'm going to show how to export the data in the graph. I was hoping to do several different kinds of export options, uh, like a picture in addition to the Google Charts option that I went with, but uh, JavaFX's file chooser is incomplete at the moment and won't return or allow you to access the chosen um, file extension. Here we're looking at the Google Chart HTML uh, export option. Uh, we can see the graph that it generated there, and then down below is the SVG code uh, used to display the graph. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the table here. I wanted to do a comma separated value file option as well, but same problem with the incomplete file chooser, so I just went with an HTML file, and then you can copy that pretty much anywhere you need it. Here I've copied it into Excel, and I'm going to make a graph of the data. So yeah, while I'm doing that, I'm just going to say that this is still a pretty commonly used multimeter and there's still companies multiple making uh, different versions of it. It's the uh, MAS345. I think this will also work with the 344 and the 343 as well, but I haven't tested it. Uh, 
does use a different version of RXTX depending on your operating system, so I can't just do one thing that's deployable everywhere. Uh, but I will put together some downloads and put the link to those in the description. Oh, and here I discovered that if I turn on the backlight on the meter, the green screen makes it go invisible, and I thought that was really cool, so I played with that a bit. That is pretty much everything, though. Uh, if you have any questions regarding RXTX or JavaFX, uh, go ahead and contact me. Uh, this is a pretty fun little project, and I learned a lot. Thanks for watching.